what are we talking about tonight? Oh, um, Atheism Plus. Could somebody uh, give us a concise definition of what that is? No. No? That can't, nobody can give a concise definition of what that is. Well, well shit. <laughs> I'm going to pull up Jen McCrite. 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 Is everybody trying to look it up right now? No, yeah. I'm not looking anything up. I'm walking up to get a glass of water. <laughs> is somebody looking it up right now? You should read the one about uh, her responding to common misconceptions. You pull that one up, Chaz, and I'll pull up the, the other one. Okay. Okay, so the original concept of Atheism Plus was... We're, we're atheists, plus we care about social justice, plus we support women's rights, plus we protest racism, homophobia, transphobia, and we use critical thinking and skepticism, among other things. It looks like other things have been added to it since then. Great. Great. I'm on board with all of that. I, I think I'm on board with all of that, but I'm, I'm always a little wary of social justice as a phrase because it incorporates so much. Yeah, I mean, broad, social justice is a broadly defined term. It's incredibly broadly defined. Like, just to give an example, uh, on the UU page, there's a statement against guns that in favor of more stricter gun control legislation. It's filed under social justice. Sure, and I think that, for example, PZ Myers in his most recent blog post on this subject specifically included his views on guns as part of the social justice movement. So I guess the question is, uh, if, if, if local groups start acting out, saying we're going to make as part of our mission to further gun control legislation, wouldn't groups in the South lose a lot of their members over that? Uh, yeah, I'd have a hard time buying into that. I'm an active member of the gun culture. <laughs> I'm not, but I'd be worried about losing people like you know who cling to their guns without religion. I'd like to think I have a reasonable view on guns, but... Uh but it's probably not uh, as liberal as many people would like it to be. As Minnesotans, hmm. it's not as liberal a view as the Minnesotan view. Probably not. I don't and, know. And, and guns is just one example. I mean, we could pick so many other things, like animal rights. Where... I seriously doubt, though, that guns are going to, when, when everything sifts out, that guns are going to be a major issue for the uh, Atheist Plus movement. I don't know I if that's just, true. I really doubt uh, it. I'm pretty sure Atheism Plus is, is going to mirror the progressive wing. I agree, but you'll also understand that – I mean, how do I put this? Guns are not a major political issue in the U.S. at all, except for when you have public shootings. Like every week we do that. We have public shootings every week. Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's not a big deal to the major parties that are in power well, because they're being lobbied constantly by uh, – by the NRA, but it's a big deal to left wingers. Right. Well, even even right most of the left wingers I know don't talk about it very much unless you have something like the Aurora shooting happen. And even then, most of them are fairly reasonable along the lines of, "Why the hell are we letting people walk around with you know, a hundred round mags and stuff like that?" Like I have no problem with those conversations. I have no problem with those conversations either. I don't need a hundred round mag. No. I don't, yeah. I don't even I, well, need a gun. I don't know, I don't know anybody it. who does, and I'm and I'm an avid hunter, so. Like, and there's no just, reason why Jared Laughner needed an extension to his gun either, to hold 31 rounds, you know. But the point is, these are potentially very divisive issues. Once you start sure. talking about gun control, or once you start talking about animal rights, some people are going to take very hardline stances on those issues, sure. one way or but, the other. But I don't think you're going to end up with. I mean, I, I'm just being, I'm being realistic, and I think you guys, uh, I, 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 even if you have a, I, I don't think gun control is going to be a central issue for atheism plus. I just don't see that happening, not not in the near future. Okay. It may well, be, I did say I was just be being cautious issue. about. It may be an issue on which, it's like this. It may be an issue on which they have stances, but I don't think it's going to be a make or break issue. Yeah. So it's sort of like how you can go to the Unitarian Church and still like. You know, enjoy your gun in your spare time. And not, yeah, it doesn't yeah, come off that much. It's not going to be a make or break issue. You can go, you can, you can go to a Unitarian church and be part of the gun culture. You can't really go to a Unitarian church and not be pro LGBT rights. Right. Like, you're right. just gonna. I mean, that's just not. You're not gonna. It's all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say that. Um. Whenever. You know, maybe. 
it's not a, a big central issue, but I do feel like if you have a differing opinion and you express it and you don't, um, you know, paint it in rosy figures for someone who disagrees with you, that as long as you're not a part of the majority, you're going to be you're going to be jumped on, piled on, and your view's not going to be um, given its share its fair due. Well. Uh, from what I've seen, and this is an example where gun control would be a good example of this, where I think that probably the opinion of most of the people who are espousing this atheism plus, as far as on the on the like the big names that are doing it, are going to say, look, there are just issues that are fairly like open and shut cases. How like wanting gender diversity in the movement, wanting it to be welcoming into women and things like that, that's pretty much an open and shut case. Whether or not we have a, a strong stance on, uh, you know, owning shotguns in your home is not going to be that kind of issue. Okay. And I, I would think that would be the kind of issue where the debate would be more, you know, open. That makes, Does that sense, make sense? sense. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense to me, actually. I hope you're right. Uh, yeah, I, I think from what I've seen, I, I think that's probably the case. Like, uh, there is my concern that, um, well, okay, for a little hit background, Jim McCrite posted this, you know, but she she coined the term atheism plus on her blog. Greta Christine has picked it up. A lot of the people over at Free Thought Blogs have picked it up. There have been a few people outside of Free Thought Blogs that have picked it up. Uh, Richard, Richard Carrier, for example. He's on Free Thought Blogs. Oh, is he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Adam Lee from um, Daylight, Daylight Atheism. atheism. Yeah. Um, I don't, I'll be honest with you, there aren't a whole lot of atheist blogs I read outside of Freethought Blogs and uh, Friendly Atheist, and I don't think he's picked it up. He's commented on it, but he hasn't picked up the term or, or anything. Well, th- like the big name people in this are basically Jim McKay, Greta Christina, PZ Myers, and a few others. And um, uh, oh, one of the things that concerns me about it is is that. Jen McCright, now that she's like, she coined the term, she's the one, this needs to happen. But now, like today, it's coming out, well, we don't need any one person, you know, organizing it or anything like that, which is very like Occupy Wall Street mentality, which I can understand because it's coming from this progressive liberal uh, viewpoint. But that creates all kinds of messaging and logistics issues, some of which are easier to deal with online than they are, for example, in Zuccotti Park. But still, it creates all kinds of logistics and messaging issues that there's no consistent message if you don't have anybody in charge, which is why, for example, when Richard Kerr went out and shot his mouth off in his blog the other day, there was a lot of, well, he doesn't speak for me, but, you know, there was it, it created messaging issues right off the bat, which Ron Lindsay on his blog post over at CFI on this issue pointed out was, you know, Carrier went and shot his mouth off and so it, it creates a well who who speaks for the movement clearly well, Jen said Richard doesn't speak for for the movement right but then so who does apparently she does right but then at the same time she's saying that we don't she doesn't like she doesn't want to be a like she had a blog post today talking about how there's not going to be a like a, a any kind of major like leadership for the movement it's like she's not talking about wanting to be the 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 spokesman or anything like that. So that creates messaging problems because then you're saying, well, Richard Kerr doesn't speak for the movement, but then there's nobody that really speaks for the movement unless it's you. If you're saying you don't speak for the movement, then who does? What is the movement? There is, yeah, that creates, that creates issues. And I always, I know that was always a thing that the, the, the progressive part aspect of like, uh, the, the, the Occupy Wall Street people were always proud of the fact they're like, well, we're you know we're against this and, and we don't have we don't have leadership and that was always something that they touted as as a good thing, but it also in the end was self defeating. I thought and that that's a concern I have. I have a worry that you can say not, you don't have leadership right up until you need to kick somebody out, right? And right. then you do, right? Have leadership and you do, yeah. Somebody has to lead on the on these kinds of things, and if you don't have somebody willing to take that monocle. Or moniker for themselves, then you you create. There's no accountability for the message. Yeah, and I think that's kind of bullcrap. I mean, these people they're the leaders. If it spreads, then they they yeah. will be the leaders. The free thought well, blogs is leading the movement. the The core of free thought blogs is leading the movement, and we all know who who they are. 
I mean, it's, you know, What's, it's PZ, it's Jen, it's, it's Steph, it's Ophelia. Has Ed even written on this issue yet? Because I know Ed Brighton, Ed Brighton and PZ are the run, they are the ones that run Free Thought Blogs. I, I haven't seen Ed write on it now. Yeah, which is interesting. Like, I, I assume Ed's, like, on board, but he's too busy writing about David Barton and the Republican Convention to worry about this issue. Yeah, I'm is pretty sure he's on board. Yeah, like, I, I think he would have said something if he wasn't. I wonder what if that's going to cause some issues. I know Kylie Stur- Sturgis, Sturgis, um, she's um, expressed some dismay with, or maybe just skepticism towards A plus, and she's on Free Thought Blogs. Is that well, going I, to? I, there was another Free Thought blogger today that was like, "I'm not picking sides. Come back to me when you guys have got all this settled down. Until then, I'm just going to kind of take a vacation." Yeah, I don't remember who that was, but but that that was another blog post that was up today that was like, I've got people on both sides of all these issues trying to get me to denounce the other one, and I'm not going to do it. So until you guys settle down, I'm just going to remove myself from the situation. Like he's not, he says like I'm not leaving Free Thought Blogs and I'm not leaving the atheist community, but I'm also not going to engage with this conversation right now. Hmm. Who would have said that? That's like a fun guessing game. No. The, I mean, as far as I can I can tell the. The core social justice activists at Free Thought Blogs are all on board, and that includes uh, Rick Carrier, Jason Tabot, Is Pete Carrier Myers. a core social justice guy? Certainly he's trying to make a splash for that now, yeah. yeah. Carrier always struck me as more of a counter-apologetics guy who... I, I'm not a I'm not a nearly as big of a fan of Carrier. Carrier's smart enough to know who the cool kids are. He's trying to horn it on the table. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's he sounds, wants that's, to sit at that table. Yeah, that's fair enough. Daniel <clears throat> Fink's on board. That doesn't well, surprise me. That doesn't surprise me. I have a lot of respect for him. Well, yeah. I think Daniel's shown a certain uh, hesitancy to use the same language that Richard does, uh, which. <laughs> yeah. well, which to me is is most of the objections about this movement have been about their exclusionary tactics, not about right. their goals. I, I think we're all pretty much on board with their goals. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, they, have a, they have a response which is along the lines of, why would you want to be a part of a movement you don't agree with, which is, is plausible at face value. I mean, like PZ had the, the Buffy the Vampire Club fan club example, which was like, if you don't like Buffy the Vampire Club, why would you join – or Buffy the Vampire, why would you join the Buffy the Vampire Club – yeah, we don't want you here if you're not a fan of Buffy the Vampire. How is that a good analogy? Well, if you if you not if you don't want to be an atheism plus, if you don't agree with the social justice aspects of it, why would you care? No, it's like if you love Buffy the Vampire, but people are writing in in ten foot high letters uh, in human shit on walls, Buffy rocks, and you're like, no, that's a terrible way to spread the message. <laughs> I love Buffy, and I hate to see her written in shit like that. Oh. This is about I, means, not about ends. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have a problem with the idea of a certain, like, s- like if free thought blogs became atheism plus blogs, like, if that, if that's, a, if that is effectively, even if it's not like what it got renamed as, but if, if, if to be in free thought blogs, you had to be like progressive liberal atheist, I'd be okay with that. That's fine. That's what, I mean, that's, the mainstream of, of atheism is progressive liberal atheism. It's there's there's like there's there's two basic main. I mean, there's two what I would they, like. There's mainstreams in America. It, it's not weird. It's not bad to say that Democrats are mainstream in America and Republicans are mainstream in America. Just like in the atheist community, libertarians are main like libertarian leaning people are mainstreamed and progressive leaning people are mainstreamed in the atheist movement. And if you had a subset of the atheist community that said Look, we don't like the libertarians. We want to do our own thing, and we don't want to be just atheists because we want to distinguish ourselves from the libertarians. We want to be atheism plus. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Like that just isn't that don't... what's already happened? I mean, I th- yeah, you're describing so sure. it like it's the future. No, but I mean, it's 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 just that now they're coming out and saying, look, we're we're tired of trying to get everybody to come to our side. We're just going to go and do our own thing. Like, like uh, until now, no, it had all. They said, they said they're going to kick the subhumans into the sewers. That's well, not the same thing as go do your own. That's thing. what Carrier said. 
Okay. Well, I'm I'm going to include everyone who says what this movement is on Free Thought Blogs as part of what the movement is. Okay, but you have to. I mean, there's leadership. <sighs> okay, that's not fair. That's the that's part of the problem. That's my whole point about not having specific leadership is it's not fair to categorize what one person says for the whole people who who associate themselves with the name. You're not being charitable when you do that, Damien. And yes, it's easy to do that, but that doesn't mean it's a good idea to do it. And you don't think I can find that sort of exclusivistic language on Greta's or Jen's blog? I'd say Greta, I'm sure, has plenty of exclusionary. You, you okay? Language. All right, let me let me get to my point. You're derailing my point, which is, it's not an issue for from their perspective. I'm not I'm not defending it or telling it, saying it's good or bad, but from their perspective, apparently, from what they've said. It's, it's not an issue of excluding people who disagree with them. It's an issue of being welcoming to people who do agree with them. And if you have to create an environment where you encourage, you know, you, you create, it's like creating safe zones for, yeah. for, for, for people who don't want to be called cunts and sluts and whores and, you know, dykes and, and whatever. And, and that's perfectly reasonable. Yeah, that, that is perfectly reasonable. I don't think it's exactly... We should all want that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's exactly uh, an amazing new advance in plussing anything, though. In fact, just, that's I don't just actually, courtesy. But, but, that's I don't actually fine, know but, how but, calling themselves A-plus is going to keep that from happening. Well, okay. How, yeah, how is that going to change anything? Huh? No, no. Go on. How's it going to change stuff? Well, part of it is it's going to be. I mean, I can't. I can't predict the future. But, but I would ideally, if I was doing this, it would be along the lines of creating a community of bloggers who coalesce around the same values. And th- this is one of the things that always worried me about free thought blogs alone. I mean, when free thought blogs got first created, I was kind of hinky on the whole thing because there is. How do you put this? Like, because free thought blog, when free thought blogs becomes the go-to one-stop shop for everything atheism, Mm -hmm. it, and which it became overnight, almost immediately, um, it becomes, it becomes an issue of, are you going to become so broad that there's no core message? Are you going to become so narrow that you're not getting the nuances of the, of the, broader community you see what i'm saying like there is a lot of diversity within the atheist community so if you if you contract to the point where you pick a core demographic of people that you're catering to you're excluding the broader community if you try to be so broad that you're you're something to everyone then there's no um like then you get infighting from within your own group which is what happened at first they tried to they tried to be the broader free thought this is a block of for all atheist thing, and it, all it did was all it led was infighting. Which, wait, and, and wait can infighting. you give an example of that? Huh? Can you give an example of that? Sure. The the uh, Thunderfoot thing, the uh, the stuff with uh, uh, Loftus. Uh, Loftus. Well, I don't even uh, know what that was about. What the Greg Loftus, Layden yes. stuff. The what? what? Was the third one? Gr- Greg Layden. Okay. Um, so well. Wait. Okay. So let's go through these examples. In Thunderfoot's case, he disagreed about the need to focus on anti-sexual harassment policies, right? Right, right. And he got kicked off for that. No, well, they say there's more to it. I think mm-hmm. there's probably more to it. And the fact that he, the things he did after that with hacking... No, no, you don't get to bring that into it. I'm talking about why he got kicked off. Well, th- it, when it becomes an issue of their word against his, I'm, 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 I'm going to say that they come across as more trustworthy. Well, yeah, now that we know that he broke the law, yeah. Right. Um, uh, I'm not saying that, that he's not, you know, uh, breaking the federal wiretapping statutes or anything like that. Right. Because he clearly did. But the the point is he got kicked off not because he broke the law, but because he broke the unwritten rule that you can't speak out against social justice or women's rights. Okay. Oh, well, what and, they... Go ahead. Okay. All right. Well, and, and that was – that's my – okay, that was my point was – that was my initial point was this is free thought box 
try to become something for everyone as a one-stop shop for atheists. The yes. problem is that is you're not going to have somebody like Penn Jillette. If Penn Jillette no, had no. become a blogger on there, Penn Jillette would have not survived any longer than Thunderfoot would have. Right. And for because, the same reasons. For the same reasons. Okay. Because they can't tolerate diversity, uh, intellectual diversity in their midst. They're incapable of that constitutionally as progressives. No, 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 no blogging community is ever going to be able to tolerate that much diversity within their midst without having infighting. Okay, that's just <laughs> that's just inherent to, to to part of what blogging is. Like I I was not that, I, one of the things that you that that you've criticized you guys the both of you have criticized from the beginning is that free thought blogs like crack. The, the, there's this argument that they like somehow crack down on on dissent. And, and my point is, is that like, yeah, that's just human nature. That we should fight that. Cr- yeah, that's like one that's of the like worst things about do. human nature is to group think. Yeah. That's like what skeptics do. We we, we like, realize like, that like in, you're like, criticizing the is- them. You're criticizing them for being normal human beings. Like I'm not. I'm not. I, I had. I've never criticized free thought philo- the, the the people on free thought vlogs for going after Thunderfoot for something they disagreed with him on. That's. Part of I mean, that's what blogging is all about is going after people you disagree with. Well, there's and nothing wrong with going after them, like strongly disagreeing. And there's, there's a huge difference between saying here's here's why I disagree with you, and uh, you know telling them, you know he, he's a terrible well, person, get the fuck out. Well, okay, but oh, yeah, my guess, guess is, my guess guess is okay, before. all right, all right. But my guess is, and this is what it looked like to me at the time, is it started out as, wow, you don't come, you, you don't, I don't think you're right about this, and here's why. And his response was. Silly argument, and then it was, it, it was just a, it was a diminishing returns back and forth, and it just got worse and worse. They could but have just said, "Well, we're not going to convince you, and we don't need to, we don't need to keep hammering at this." Yeah, this, but this, 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 they would have had to be the bigger man. That would have been terrible. Sorry, well, the bigger person. That I'm not going to like hold anyone to that standard on the issue of blocking. I mean, we've all said things, and 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 and. and backed ourselves into corners and arguments we could we could we couldn't get out of later because we said it publicly like once you've taken a stance publicly it's really hard to back away from it you did it just the other day on facebook in front of all your peers right in front of the people you know that and respect right so why can't they be more like you um and say i was wrong or you know, we're not going to agree on this. Let's, you know, move on to the next subject. I mean, is it that hard to disagree agreeably? Is that something? Is. is that really it's, too much to expect? It's really hard for most people to do that. Um, but like skeptics, that's the whole point. Like, if you want to call yourself, a, I'm sorry, shouting. If you want to call yourself a skeptic, the idea is to bring yourself um, outside of your emotions and your intuitions that have led you astray, and try and find some kind of foundation that is truth. So. Isn't arguing fairly and and being able to just move on if you can't uh, find a, a point of agreement part of being a skeptic? Okay. Can you – would you say the same thing if you were in an argument with somebody about the issue of homeopathy? I have a hard time. Yeah. No. I mean, you have a really hard time because it's an issue you care a whole lot about no. and you feel like it's clearly like, a right and wrong side. Easy it's because there's, there's so clearly like yeah. evidence on point. This is not right. – homeopathy is not but, like an ethical but, question. But you, have it's a scientific question. That, you have to understand that, that, that most, of the, most of the people on, uh, that are debating on this, on one side of the issue, feel that the libertarian position has no real legitimate point to be made. Like it's just fundamentally a bankrupt – concept there's a and, difference and, between and politics that's, and that's, science first of all that's not how liberals feel liberals feel like libertarians are right about civil rights that they're right about personal freedom they feel like libertarians yes. are correct about any number of things and then they disagree with libertarians on a few issues about hello tj can you not hear me wow ah, i this is this has not gone the way i was expecting it to go i thought we'd focus more on atheism plus i know <laughs> we've gone down to the core of uh, the core divide, versus, yeah, the, the core, core divide. divide, the deep rift, the actual you know, deep rift. You know, maybe maybe that really is the actual deep rift. Well, that's what CJ's uh, posited. He thinks that libertarians and progressives just can't coexist, and that was always going to happen. Yeah, I would love to disagree with him, but he's gone. <laughs> I would like to think. I would like to think that we could we could get through 
those disagreements between progressive and progressive progressives and libertarians if we were willing to take the emotion out of it and not personalize it so much yeah i think that's that's the key to it like we well i mean i've been a libertarian and so you know so is yeah. cj come to think of it we've all been libertarians oh well, well yeah it's just a step in our progress <laughs> hey cj yeah I, I just realized that all three of us are former libertarians. Yes, which is why we're much able to put ourselves in the mindset of those people. Right. I guess that's harder for people who've always been hardcore left-wing yes. people. Or maybe people who converted suddenly from hardcore right-wing to hardcore left-wing. Right. Which my dad did in reverse. I don't know, man. I just feel like we, sh- we should be able to disagree about about these sorts of things agreeably. And even if somebody's just obstinate and keeps believing in homeopathy... That's no reason to call him a subhuman sewer dweller and I, kick I agree them out. with you. Richard Carrier is beyond the pale on this issue. That's that's a separate question than than the. I mean, by going back to Richard Carrier, you're you're ignoring the. I'm exposing the worst positions. impulses of atheism. Plus, is what I'm doing. And don't think it's just him. You've read their other blogs. You know that they all have inclinations toward that. Okay. We all we all have inclinations toward darker sides, but it's it's the it's it's Richard it's the fact that Richard Carrier crossed the line in a way that that exposes the the negative in, in, inclinations that, that that if anything works as a mitigating factor for other people as a as a cautionary tale. Okay, and, and part of that cautionary tale is having people from outside the FTB bubble, people like us, speak up about why that's wrong. Okay. Anyway, where, where 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 I lost you, we were talking about the libertarian aspect of it, and I think one of the one of the important things to point out though is that they're going to say I don't that, that that constantly debating with the libertarians is not only does it not get anywhere, and not only do they consider the the libertarian position completely untenable on the issue of you know. Which is which blows my mind because I can't imagine like I don't know. Here, here's one of the things that really bothers me about most of the libertarian atheists that I know, or that they, that are prominent, like, like Penn Jillette, people who've spoken on this issue and, have, and, for, and as far as I'm concerned said silly things. Okay, is that somebody like Penn should want what is going on in the community right now to be going on the way it is? It's going on mm. privately among people hashing it out. In a in a situ in a, in a totally voluntarily participatory situation, it, it and and this is this is entirely me psychologizing now, but <laughs> but the lack of empathy that you see so much in libertarian politics speaks to a larger lack of empathy. It seems to me for social justice issues in general. Well, I mean, there's a two-side coin there because I would feel, as a libertarian, I felt compassionate for, you know, drug users who were thrown in jail, but not as compassionate for those panhandling. Right. So I don't think that's quite that easy. We can just, but, but, and but there is a certain amount of heartlessness. I and I realize yeah, that now, yeah. now that I'm not a libertarian, there is right. there is a way that you've kind of. Um, etched out an alternate reality for yourself. Yeah. Well, and see, this all goes – one of the things – Damon and I talked about this a little bit over the phone today. We shouldn't have. We should have done this on, on recording before because now we have to yeah. go back to the conversation we've already had. It's okay. I've already forgotten everything we said. Right. <laughs> Damon and I talked about how this doesn't just go back to Elevator Gate. This goes all the way back to Chris Mooney and the accommodationist argument. Now, what's this? You got to uh, explain this for me. I don't know anything about Chris Mooney. Okay. Well, back before you – back before uh, – Oh, no. Had, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> okay. Well, because you know how like one of the things you guys – you guys have talked about a few po- podcasts ago, how all of this that's going on now goes back forever you know, to yeah. arguments between ele- – back to Elevator Gate and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't think you realize how far back this really goes. Uh, it goes back like, so – yeah. The, the, all of the people who are having this argument now that are on the Atheism Plus side, to a large extent, are the same people who were who were on having the argument on the against accommodationism a few years ago. Now, 
<clears throat> I can yeah, um which I like to call affectionately Team PZ. Yes. So it's like a divide between like Harvard humanists and PZ. Kind of, kind of. It was those it was, schools of thought, if not those individuals. It was, it was, it was okay. a school of thought about how to address the broader non secular community, and it was basically the new atheists, uh, or as they like to be labeled by their critics, the strident atheists, <laughs> versus. Um, the humanist wing and the uh, the more um, politically connected wings and the, of the of the of the atheist community and Chris Mooney came to represent the like the center of that storm. The let's work with religious people to get good shit done side of the argument. Right. Oh, the, awful. Which which shaded into let's not criticize their faith. Which right. is really the part that people got M- hung up oh, on. Okay. Where Mooney went wrong was where he was trying to, like, he accused Dawkins and and uh, Harris and PZ in particular, like he went after PZ in particular, of of harming their own cause. Well, yeah, but, I can see that sometimes. Well, um, and it's, it's a, I don't want to get I don't want to get into the nuances of the argument because it, it's it's from years ago. But a yeah. lot of the people now who are free thought blogs, minus a few very interesting examples, um, are all like all of the core people of free thought blogs now um, that are making it like Greta, Jen, uh, PZ, uh, and a few others were all of the people who were on one side of that issue. They, they, a lot of the friendships that exist on Free Thought Blogs now, the core of those friendships were formed around going after Mooney. And it was a very us versus them mentality. There's a lot of entrenchment going on in defense of, at the time, what seemed like reasonable, but looking back were probably somewhat over the top arguments. And, right. and you got this core group of people. And some of the biggest people arguing on that were Ophelia Benson, who I don't have a lot of respect for. Um, you don't have Greta to Christ- say things like that. That's not that doesn't add to the discussion. Greta Christina, <laughs> who I do have a lot of respect for. Okay, never mind then. Jen McBride, <laughs> who I have a lot of respect for. PZ, who I have mixed feelings about, but I think is broadly better, uh, is done more good than harm. And so you have this this group of people that came together around these arguments, went after uh, Chris Mooney, and then what came out of that was this like coalition of close friends, speakers at conferences, and all that, and, and a lot of those people ended up over at Free Thought Blogs. All of this, one of the things that's kind of interesting to me about all this is whenever um, ERV, Abby Smith, was making all of these kind of quasi-misogynistic Mooney Tits argument qu- quotes and saying terrible, awful things about the person, and they agreed with her, it was fine. Right. Yep. But w- once... That became – once she turned that back on them, she became persona non grata. Um, you just can't turn that personality off. You know what I mean? It's like right. it's always on. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, uh, um, you argue with creationists too long, then <laughs> you start giving up on the possibility that the other side can hear you. Right. right. That's one of the things that turned me off about Ophelia Benson is, is I think that in a lot of ways she was – completely the same way in arguing against Chris Mooney back in the day and said a lot of the same kinds of things. But now, since she's in the popular kids club with PZ and them, she says she's, you know, all, you know, we can't say these kinds of things, which is fine. People are allowed to evolve. There's just not a lot of consistency there. Huh. So I think it's fine to evolve, but you need to account for your past mistakes. I, I think that we failed to make it clear why we've spent so much time on the deep rifts. And the reason is this. Uh, because atheism, she called me when to talk about it. I, did, I, did, I, did, I, did, I don't spend no. much time on it. I'm trying to link it back to the topic. Okay. We're talking about Atheism Plus, which we can all agree is a great idea in theory. Yes, atheists should work for social justice. Yes, atheists should work to prevent homophobia, transphobia. All those things, and our group does most of those things in, in as much as we can. We do those things, and a lot of local groups do those things. It's not that yeah. un- it's not that unusual or startling or new, but in this case, it's thought of as being an amazing new thing because 
this one group of people has said, this is who we're going to be now. Right. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, you know, welcome aboard. But but now they want to lead it. Now they want to tell us how it's supposed to work. Yeah. And it's not that I guess I just I just disagree with their methods. I guess I just disagree with the whole progressive foundations in some ways. And they draw back to those things. I'm, I'm not sure if I disagree with the with the progressive foundation so much as just that I'm just afraid that if we try to build a new movement on top of a deep rift, that yeah. <laughs> that, that I don't think that's a good recipe to you know to say okay new now mo- we've got this new, other side. But new movements are built on top of deep rifts all the time. And how does that work out? Eh, depends on the leadership and and what and and whether and how legitimate the rift was and. What's a good? What's an example of that? Like spurring positive change. Um, like the, most of the historical examples I'm thinking of are just terrible. No, Protestant Christianity was built on a deep rift. <laughs> okay, and, and look how that worked out. They started killing each other in droves. Sure, I don't think that's going to happen here. Well, I'm just saying, you know, where, where's a positive example? You you could make some sort of weird argument that Protestantism led to the Reformation. I mean, led to the if, the, the Reformation led to the Enlightenment. Yeah. But you I'm asked. Sure you asked about. You asked about. You know. I mean. What's a good example of a of a? You, you you have a deep rift, and then you form a new denominational identity. And how is that a good thing? I don't know. I think if anything, it shows a sign that the movement is is uh, healthy and diverse. Because I know that that sounds weird, but like it it. One of the one of the reasons I think that Christianity is so healthy in America is because it's it, because of the diversity and the ability for it to to diversify and cater to a broad community. And I think the atheism community it's just an example. And I've said this for a while now that I thought as the atheism community got larger, eventually you would have a, a large enough community that it would start splintering into the libertarian section and the progressive section. And eventually those splits will happen again. I just wonder if it that's not a perfect analogy because Christianity, even though it's diverse, it's always been the go-to religion as far as um, the United States has has been. Right. So you're you're saying that there's a huge difference between a majority dominant religion splitting itself into lots of little bits and a tiny minority further splitting itself whenever it's already an oppressed minority and now it's weakening itself further. Yeah. But you have. You have you have split you had splits in the in the gay community, and you know and and eventually it coalesced around a strong central message and a few national organizations. But you had the, those splits in the early days of the rise of the gay rights of the of the gay community and the gay rights movement in this country. You had fights about what role transgender was going to play in the community and that kind of stuff. Like that's all yeah. just part of forming. That's all all part of forming your identity as a as a coalition and a group. Okay, here, here's what I'm concerned with, and tell me why I shouldn't be worried. These are big national groups that are that are fighting against each other and forming their identity, and in some cases not fighting against each other, and saying, you know, we'll happily work alongside the humanists, even though we prefer to use this new label. So that's mm-hmm. cool. Uh, but they're also, like you say, this, it's a, it's a rift between the libertarian and the progressive wings of the movement. Sure. What if this schism becomes uh, a schismatic contagion and starts affecting regional? Groups or conferences or local groups. Can are groups large enough to handle this? Not yet. Not on the local level, for sure. I think on the. I mean, I I, th- I think on the local level we're small enough that we're immune to it in somewhat still. That like it's not gonna. It's just gonna be an issue of. It'll it'll be a, a, more of an accident of history than anything where whoever the historical leadership is of the group kind of their views of things and the kind of like the way that the group evolves over time and what the core demographics of the membership happens to be will will lead to the direction eventually those groups will grow large enough that it's likely they'll faction out too i think that that's just I, i'm not i'm not all woe is me about it i think it's just part of growing that uh, and and the internet is, has a makes it a lot easier because the internet brings a lot of people from all over the country and the globe together and so you're able to to coalesce and, and have these things be accelerated, but on the local level, it's just not not happening right now because they're just not large enough yet. Hmm. I don't want to see our group split uh, to to push out the libertarians and say, hey guys, you know, 
Go uh, go be on your own in your own little libertarian well, I mean, group. Who's, you know. who's to say it wouldn't happen the other way eventually? I mean, I, I, I just think... center right is or center left is still the vast majority. Yeah, but I even mean, in I mean, Oklahoma. What, yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, twenty years from now, that may be that may happen. I mean, it's already happened in Dallas. It, it's my understanding that that was largely a personality-driven conflict. A lot of times it is a personality-driven conflict. There's a lot of personality-driven conflict going on in what's happening at the national level, too. So but why should we admire that, then? Like, shouldn't we shouldn't we say that's the, something that needs to be ex- <laughs> Shouldn't we fight these impulses? I never say anything about admiring it. It's it's just I'm not, I'm not all woe is me about it. It's just an issue of being realistic about it and thinking that the movement somehow – is in crisis or can't survive this is, is to me, not taking a long-term view of, of, of other movements that have gone through what I think are, are in a lot of ways much more difficult rifts in part because these things are being hashed out. Uh, these, these things aren't taking a decade or two to resolve themselves through newsletters and emails and, and letter-writing campaigns. They're happening on blogs over – Two, three, four, five weeks, and, and, and now up over a year. Instead of you know, elevator. Th- this rift in over elevator gate was able to get as big as it was because of the internet, but it also happened much more. Qu- is happening much more quickly, I think, than than would have happened even a decade ago. Speaking of that, I uh, downloaded all of the slime pit to my Kindle. It's huge. You are out of atheism plus. Yeah, I'm. I'm gone. Yeah. I'm out. Because I'm actually taking the time to read that for myself instead of just assuming they're all a bunch of misogynist bastards. You're out. Yeah, how, I'm much, out of my ass. How, how much misogyny is going on in there? Well, I mean, I haven't seen hardly any so far, but I'm just at the beginning. It gets viler as as things go on. Yeah. Yeah. People, when I go on there, it's it's sometimes vile. I would I wouldn't I wouldn't know. I don't I don't uh, I don't read comment threads if I can avoid them. Which is why you think that Free Thought Blogs is such a wonderful place, free from groupthink. Because you don't read the comment threads. I admire people like Sam Harris all of a sudden because his blog has disabled you know comments and yeah. Andrew Sullivan as well. Like oh man. Well, what worries he, me is Richard Dawkins has been participating a lot on Twitter, and I think is he that needs really to him? him? Is that really him? It's either him like or somebody that's speaking for him. <laughs> I just assumed it was his campaign manager or something. Yeah. Either way, I think it's a mistake. Yeah. It is. I think I think by engaging in these conversations, if you are somebody who is seen as as like, who ha, who has that prominent of a role in the atheist community, I think it's a really big mistake to to engage in this conversation at this early of a stage in it. He's got way more cachet than Free Thought Blogs, though. Outside outside the blogosphere, who's not going to go on Twitter I and that kind of stuff? You. I agree with you, which is why I think it's a mistake for him to engage because there's no telling how this is all going to shake out in the end on the blogosphere. And for him to have picked a side now kind of weds him to that position regardless of how things turn out later. Unless he's rational and is able to change his mind. I disagree. He was already on one side. But that dear Muslima, it doesn't matter anymore. I agree, which I think the Dear Muslima thing was, was a mistake on his part. Oh, it was but, awful. Yeah, it was yeah. really yeah. bad was reasoning. A, There's no, yeah. no doubt about that. Which is why I'm that, saying that it was a mistake for him to engage in this conversation because right. he doesn't seem to be – he seems to not be taking it as seriously as the people who who are spearheading the conversation. And since he's not taking it as seriously, he's kind of alienated himself from a lot of people who who would otherwise be his allies. I guess now he's just got the old white man demographic. Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Him and the humanists. I don't. I don't want to beat up on Dawkins because I know we've beaten up on him a lot on this podcast already for other things. Recently, but, I haven't even posted that one yet. Yeah, just. Um, well, and yeah, I I will say that the one issue that worries me because I, I in part maybe it's because I don't read that many comment threads, but. From everything I've seen of it, the whole DJ Grothy thing really bothered me. Yes. Because I thought it was an example where I don't think DJ – I thought DJ come out, came out of that being characterized a, a lot. And maybe it's because I've been listening to DJ's podcast for such a long time. or I listened to DJ's podcast for years, and I know, and, and I feel like I, I know DJ's pretty well. And, and like, it's, you know, like when you listen to somebody's podcast for a long time, you kind of get to know them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like 
I feel like DJ's not. I thought he. I thought it was unfair. Yeah, I didn't think it was fair the way DJ was characterized in that situation. And I don't think so at all. I think he was just uh, putting together a question and telling him his point of view. And yeah. instead of engaging him, they just said, "Oh, you're blaming us." Well, then fuck you. You're an anti-feminist, and Tam is, you know, in the wrong. They are anti-feminist. Right. They are against well, anti. And, and I don't think a lot of people realize that DJ. DJ's gay. He's been with the same partner for years, and he is very progressive and very pro rights, and, and he's done a lot on feminist and, and gay rights issues. And to he was one of the first ones that put together an anti harassment policy for his convention. Right. In, in the and skeptic free thought community, I think that they were the first one. Right. And I think DJ, it, yeah, I just don't, I think. I mean, I was really encouraged when they picked DJ to head up JREF because it's, it looked, it struck me as an example of JREF, which historically has been associated with a lot of libertarian leaning members of the skeptic community embracing somebody who's more progressive. Oh. And then, and then, so like that always, always was encouraged by that. And, uh, that, that DJ had been somebody that they picked to, to head up that organization. And DJ does a very good job of not, not, I mean, he's he's a lot more about trying to build the community and and make things work, and which what was one of the reasons I think he's decided not to engage with all of his critics, is because he I don't think he thinks it's, he has any chance of of coming out of it. Lo- looking, well, he did try to engage a little bit on Facebook, and he got completely right. slammed for it. Right. When you wrestle with a pig, you you know you 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 come out dirty, and the pig has a good time. You just called the leaders of atheism plus pigs. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> that was not on purpose, though, Dean. No, that's well. not. <laughs> what, what I'm saying is, is when you when you're being mischaracterized, or even if you when when somebody's not being charitable and how they're reading you, a, a lot of times it's best to just walk away from the conversation and just do the best you can and let your actions speak for you in the long term. And I think that's what DJ's doing. And I have a lot I of respect. I wish you could like point that out and say, no, you're being uncharitable, but. Yeah, from what I can tell, it's just best to just walk away because it's yeah. just Which is, never going to work out. He tried Which that, and it went really badly for him, too. They, fast, they would not let up. Fast. They would not let up. Like he, he just stopped engaging, and they're still like, well, now look what they're doing. Now look what JREF's doing. Now look what JREF's doing. Right. And it, it just went on and on. And that, to me, is the first significant achievement of Atheism Plus is to boycott Tam and to make JREF look like shit. Oh, and also not take responsibility for boycotting it and just saying, oh, we're just not going. Yeah, we're just like, explaining we're just to our legions of fans why it's a bad reason to go. It's not a boycott. Yeah, which is – and it's frustrating because I thought that DJ should be an ally for them. Yeah. You he think? should be somebody that for them is making inroads into – let's all be honest. JREF has a lot of strong libertarian backers. I just don't think libertarians should have that much trouble talking to liberals. We have so much common ground. It should. There's an entire spectrum between us, and our only real differences lie in when the free market is the best solution and when the top-down government approach is the best solution, when it's a public good right. that the free market cannot handle because it's a public good. And right. we can argue about this using evidence, but we don't ever seem to get to that point. I know. Because there's so much ideology and and values around that come to the table in those arguments. I don't even know if the values are, are that different. I think they would all say, yes, we think it's terrible to treat women like shit. But the libertarians, will they will have a, a, like a, a reaction against rules, against being told what to do, and their well, reaction is always just grow a thicker skin. That's how liberty works. But there's, well, but there's an element of what does it when – when, we all agree that it's bad to treat women poorly. The question is what qualifies as treating women poorly. That's where the debate – is that no? That's yeah. Not. Apparently, not cornering someone in an elevator. That, that's not bad enough. No, it's it's not even necessarily that. Like, the, the libertarians will actually say, you know, yeah, that's a bad thing, but that's not bad enough that there needs to be a rule about it. Well, that's and, their and attitude. That, is they don't well, like the rules. They don't like the authorities writing up lists of of you know. Which blows my mind because this is not government. Like their whole argument is, is that this is something that should be 
that private citizens should have. Like, like if I don't, if you don't agree with it, tough. It's a pri- it's 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 private. You know, this is something you hash out on the private level. And the point at which the progressives are like, we want we want these rules instituted for these private institutions. We want these private institutions to go about doing this. Then they start screaming about how like you're fascist, and I'm like, okay. You don't understand what fascist means. You don't even understand the cores of your own theory. Like I think you're, what you're making is is a valid distinction. In in some theory, it's like it's a valid distinction. But the fact is, if I have to escort somebody out of free OK, then granted they didn't necessarily pay that much to get in, but they bought a hotel room, they drove up from wherever they drove up from, and I am now saying, you know, you're out on your ass, buddy. And if I have yeah. to initiate force against them to do that, then I, that's what I have to do. If I have to actually physically shove them out the door because they're harassing women, then that's what I have to do. Now, right. you can say, well, that's not government. But it sure as hell is the initiation of force to, to enforce a code of conduct. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It could be exactly the right thing to do in that situation right. if someone's yeah. acting like wine breath or, or whoever that guy was that was licking on people. That – you know, sometimes that's what you have to do. Right. But it's you know, it, government or not, sometimes you, you have to enforce the rules. And well, they just have a thing about – they just have rules. a different sense of – they want the fewest possible rules is what they want. Right. I, that whole mentality and idea to me comes across as just kind of childish. There's an interesting argument to be made about like free market ideas and letting – you know, non-governmental institutions try to solve problems and things like that, and that's all fine. But the point at which you just don't like rules for rules' sake, like like you no. just you, you, or you have a problem with with authority, then it's just becoming it's just becoming silly. Well, it's anarchy. No, you're, you're being. I think you're you're overgeneralizing a bit. They they have a, a, a natural suspicion of rules and authority. Right. And it's not that different than how skeptics have a natural suspicion of certain setups, such like somebody's claiming to to know how this thing's going to heal you, and they haven't gone through the right process to make that claim. Yeah. They just have a natural suspicion of those things, and and you know there's always going to be lots of gray areas. There's always sure. going to be lots of gray areas, and they just have they just have a, a very different sense of what what's black. It just seems to me like in this particular argument, the progressives are much more black and white. From sure. what I've read on the comic well, threads, I, I think it's because I think <laughs> it comes from a place of their value. They, their their ultimate goal is increasing the size and diversity of the movement. Who's, and who's, who are you talking about now? The, the progressives. Okay, all right. And to the extent that that means instituting rules, they're fine with that. And the subset of the population that is very anti rules and is you know, born on the backwaters of the of the of the free internet and doesn't like top down approaches to things. And there's some element of that in the progressive community too, but like the element the 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 group the, the and and I don't know how to put this. I think you're I think it's very unfair to say that libertarians uh don't have problems with black and white thinking. <laughs> um No, no, I, I said just on this one issue. Well, just on this one issue, it's it's odd because I think of libertarians as very black and white thinkers, but in this case, they seem more willing to embrace the possibility of a gray area between you're making me slightly uncomfortable and oh my god, you're harassing women, you have to get out of the conference, or you're banned from the thread. I, w- I'm, I want to give the people who are being called cunts and whores the benefit of the doubt on the issue of when they're seen like when when you're when you're getting treated so badly, it, it's like this. Um, you get raped, and 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 I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt if you're suspicious of being alone with men. Like it's not reasonable to be suspicious of being alone with men. Most men are perfectly fine, but if you if you've been treated badly, I'm willing to give you more leeway. Oh, okay. And so when you've got people like Greta who regularly are post- putting up blog posts uh, with direct quotes of the things that she's being called by people. The fact yeah. that she tends by to men. see misogyny yeah. more often than I do is a benefit of the doubt I'm willing to give her. Of because course she sees it a lot, because yeah. She's, because she's getting it from – she's getting it so much that the times where I think it's gray, like I'm, I'm willing to give her that benefit of the doubt because she because she's, she's in a situation I'm not in. 
I feel like okay. I don't know if she, I want to say this, but I feel like I feel like half that stuff is is trolling. With the you know when they're trolling her, they want to be they want to be reposted and put I in her comments. Have no doubt blog. that you're right. I have no doubt that you're right. Okay. I, and I, and I, part I, of that's misogyny. Like they're willing to you know go past that barrier, and that and that means that they have misogynistic streak in them. But really. They want to be on her. They want to be on. They want to be posted on there because she but, does. This. There are really like, terrible people on Twitter who hide behind their anonymity and do terrible things. Yeah. And you know how I feel about anonymity. Right. It's a it's a terrible thing that turns uh, people who know how to be polite into complete it turns, assholes. It turns otherwise good people into real shitheads. Yes, absolutely. No and if we're up to me, I would simultaneously out everyone tomorrow for everything they've ever said. I would have every single word on every medium attributed directly to whoever said it. And I would do it by magic with my genie in my bottle just to cause upheaval throughout the world. See, I wouldn't do that because I – I would come out just, golden because I, think, I uh, don't I go and on. I would, I, well, see, I wouldn't do that because I would think, for example, that things like what you say on the back channel of an email listserv should be kept private. That's already you haven't private. I, I said the words that are out there that are anonymous. I see. The words so that are on public, the back channel can't hurt public, anybody. Public speech, anonymous public speech. Yeah, if, if Greta's on the back channel of FTV and says, you know, I think that Damien guy is a cunt, that doesn't hurt me because I can't right. see him there. Right. I'm talking about public oh, okay. speech. Okay, I get that. Yeah. Public, anonymous public speech. You have a big problem with it, too. Um, it, it, it and it's, it's of- all of what, what this has this been about since Elevator Gate is these fucking trolls. They get on, yes. they, they see horrible things to Rebecca, and she assumes – that because they're trolling her YouTube channel, they must also be atheists and skeptics. Right. Therefore, the atheist skeptic community is filled with hideous anonymous assholes. When in reality, YouTube is filled with hideous anonymous <laughs> assholes, and so is Reddit. Uh, yeah, yeah, Reddit. No, yeah. Reddit's awful. Yeah, when um, they use that that one, you know, they they keep citing this uh, 15 year old uh, uh, girl or woman. I'm not sure which one you'd call her. Uh, and she with the Carl uh, Sagan book. Yeah, the Carl Sagan book, and then they all just started talking about her looks and how hot she was and what they wanted to do to her. And that is shown up as, you know, the the misogyny in the atheist world. Yeah, I think that that's misogyny in the broader internet community. Yeah. yeah, that was an example of our atheism getting yeah. going way overboard. Right. But again, these are these are anonymous assholes that that could be spending time in a community like ours where we interact with real names. And real pictures of our faces. Most of the time. Learn, well, we should. And when we learn to play nice, where you learn to be a better person, and you learn how to have manners online. Or, but or, but they choose to go to Reddit instead and just cut loose. And that right. to me is a very harmful thing. And it, it, I mean, there's nothing you could. I don't see a solution to it. Yeah. I don't see an answer, but uh, certainly, I don't hang out in places like that. I don't but, go but, to forums but, like that. It's not but healthy. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. There's also the step further that says I'm going to remove myself from that situation, and I'm also going to not associate with people who will defend that kind of thing. Well, of course, it's indefensible to you know to make rape Ewok jokes at the expense of a 15 year old. Let's assume that that's a direction that atheism plus ends up going. It just is it becomes its it becomes essentially the free thought block becomes the core of the atheist plus community blogosphere. Like I I, could, I have very so. every it's reason. It's already to that. You mean more so? Well, yeah. But even more so, where they're like, there's essentially nobody on there who doesn't self-identify as that. That, okay. like, that's to me is likely to be what what ends up being the case. And then you have, you know, and and, and so within that community, like, they can regulate the comments and things like that, and which is something they'll end up doing. And I'm fine yeah. with all that. Um, and they'll push for social justice issues, which is great. We need more of that. And they'll. Um, Continually gang up on libertarians and curse at them until they leave, as Which they is, always do. Sure. And that <laughs> further splits the community. Well, okay, but but deep uh, rifts. I, I mean, you're gonna have you're gonna have those rifts occurring. No, you don't have to. You could be like Dan and say, "I'm not going to tolerate this behavior on my blog." No, no, that's no, an option. I, you can be like Dan. You what I'm saying is, is that. Most people are not like Dan, and that's and their as fault. Long as most people should. are allowed to participate online in the community, and, and, and a lot of those people are allowed to have blogs, 
that's not, Dan is not going to be the model. Dan will be the ideal. He'll be the exemplar, but he will not be the standard. As long I'm as we're sure being he aspirational. Is the though. Yeah. No, PZ is the exemplar, and he's the opposite of Dan in his comment policies. No, I mean exemplar in the Aristotelian, er, Aristotelian oh. sense. Oh, of course you do. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying he should be the model, and they should at least try to get to him. If they can't get to the, um, the, the ideal set forth by Daniel Fink, then they should at least stride for it. I, I kind of feel like that that might happen. Yeah, this is basically – there's two models here. There's the let's show compassion and create safe spaces for traditionally oppressed groups that we've identified and listed, people like gays and lesbians and trans. Or there's Dan's model. Let's be compassionate to human beings. Anyone who comes in here gets to be treated compassionately, and we're going to not call him an asshole. We're going to not try and shove a porcupine up his ass. We're going to be, just be friendly to each other in general within our movement. That's right. an approach which I vastly prefer to this oppression Olympics. Who gets to be, who gets to have safe spaces and who doesn't? At the same time, you participate every day in a safe space community. I do, yeah, where we don't allow theists. That's right. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and you participate in a secret, hidden safe space community. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, is that there's nothing wrong with having safe space communities. But if a theist came onto our board, or if one of the people on our board converted to theism, we would politely kick them. Right. We wouldn't, we wouldn't say, hey, why don't you go stick a porcupine up your ass as you fuck right off now? We would Who politely, said that? That's PZ's that's, – oh, you don't read the comment threads. You have no idea how evil these yeah. people are, CJ. Yeah, I don't read comment threads. They call, them, they call people that they want to just – To run uh, up comment on and just rip up apart they call this them chew toys, should, chew okay, toys. Com- that's what they, com- they have a nomenclature for someone they're about to run off cj it's chew toys yes. and pz has said it too he says chew toys of here's a new chew toy for you yeah here's comment a new threads are you. bad you should not participate in them but pz they're, they're likes just, the comment threads i don't i, I don't I'm, participate in them i'm gonna stop participating on facebook and any post that has more than 25 comments already Wow. Because I think, like, that's going to a standard I set for myself. Because I think after 25 comments, nothing useful ever gets contributed. Wow. Might be true. You might be right about that. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to, I might have to, like, I might have to try and keep count. Like, where's, the, where's the number of comments beyond which the thread stops being about what it was about? Right. I think 25. I think anything beyond 25 is just obviously no longer, not, no longer, uh, 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 nobody's, nobody's happy. It's just, mm. It's, yeah, nothing ever. Well, they're all happy. Out. They're just joking around about bacon. But I, I mean, that's that's going to be a, a self-imposed rule for me on Facebook. And I think it's, I think like I, I, it's the same reason I don't read comment threads because they bring out the worst in people. They bring out the hey, worst in me. Yeah, totally. They, hey, hey, hey! I want to know. I, I think we've established the deep rifts, and I'm skeptical of the leadership as it is today for atheism plus. I'm what less skeptical guys... of Jen than I'm skeptical. I, I I I can't think of anything bad about Jen. I can't no, think no, of a single either, bad thing but... to say about Jen McCrite. No, no, me, me either. Yeah, but she's not the only one, and she hasn't taken control of it. How are they going to? You know, they they make they like to mock uh, humanism, and I think they're they're kind no, of no, right. no, 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 no. No, I do have something bad to say about Jen McCrite. Never mind. You're, they're you're right. Mock humanism. Whatever. No, Ma- McBride no. uh, uh, mocked humanists for being old white men. Yeah. No. Yeah. She, she did. Yeah, she did. Okay. You're, you're, McBride did. McBride specifically came back and on later on and said, you know, I am a humanist. I like humanism. Humanism's great. You know. The, 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 she walked back her ugly tweet. That's not and, my yeah, point. Like, even the old I, white men. That's not yes. even my point. My point is how they like to mock other pe- the humanist crowd for being old and white. And if you go to a UU church, okay. that's kind of true. Wait, wait, wait. Kind that of is true. kind of true. Yeah. It's kind of All right? true if you go to a UU church. Yeah. How are they going to fix that? Who? The old white problem? Yeah, how is Atheism wait, Plus going to fix the old white point. person in atheism? Ron, Ron Lindsay had a good point that CFI has, like, how many campus groups? And yeah. Right. And it has a lot of young women in those campus groups. So, so secular humanism has, uh, I mean, it's, yes, its leaders are, tend to be old white men. Like, that's true. It's just the, a fact. But it's. Yeah. And, but that's and, true and, of the new atheism as well. Yeah. Yes. Yes. 
Well, and, and they've pointed that out, the, the new atheists, all these, you know, fairly well off uh, upper middle class to, you know, rich white men. Um, and that this is like, this is why that's why they're calling it a third wave, you know, like they're, they're it's a new wave of. But still, the new wave is still like old white men and, old, and, and young white women. They all seem pretty privileged still. I'm just curious. Oh, you're talking about the leadership of FTB now. I'm talking about I'm talking about atheism plus. Atheism plus is PZ has stood for it. Richard Carrier stood for. It. He's not an old white guy, but he's a middle aged white. He's guy. oddly enough older than me. He looks like he's a no never, never mind. way. Yeah, he's older than me. Richard Carrier. Okay, then right? he is. He's not. He's not an old white guy, but okay, he's still middle but, aged. But I'm just but trying to say, like, have, what are they lesbians. doing? Communist. Yep. You have communist. Lesbians. Yay, lesbians. You have uh, trans. She, did you still have transgender, or did she leave? I don't know. They've Natalie got, Reed. They've got Zinnia and anything. Natalie Reed. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know what Zinnia was. Yeah, but I thought well, I thought Natalie was cooled on A plus though. I think I think mm-hmm. Natalie left before A plus got announced. Yeah, and she, she like, she's like Twitter. So I don't. Man, yeah. I I don't but have any problem with diversity, but Chaz's question stands. How do you enhance that? I just how do you go I, about enhancing it? I mean, other than re- recruiting top bloggers well, from diversity categories, you don't just do that. You also have like you have a branch out into issues that okay, this this sounds awful, but go on. I don't I don't have a better way of saying it. You branch out into issues that that people within those demographics tend to care more about than people who look like us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, that, that's not. Well, yeah, like, like, uh, so, I mean, what? Well, you know, one of the things I'd like to see is better child care at conventions. And I know it's a problem and it's tough. It's a big issue to solve. How does that not help old white men? That, that would rock for me. (laughs) (laughs) But it would also bring a lot more women to conferences. How about black people? We want more people of color right here. Oh, yes, we do. I Hell have, yes. But here's the thing. I'm not the guy to answer that question. I don't know how to to care those communities. I'm not a member of this I don't community. know that there is an answer. I don't know that there is an answer. I don't think it's a uh, humanist fault. I don't think it's their fault that they're a bunch of white men. I don't think it's humanist fault that black churches have done such an incredible job of building community. Uh, yeah, part I don't of think that's... you can blame that on old white men. Well, the, <laughs> the black church in America is its own like special thing. I'm going to say something crazy. Oh, no. And it's that we are – we are uh, most atheists are privileged. And yes. most people who contribute to this um, culture, who go on blogs and have this free time are privileged. Right. And that just – that isn't – that's not available to the majority of some demographics. Like some minority of black people do have that kind of time and privilege and – you know, are a part of the academic world, and the the more that black people are, you know, part of a richer society, more part of the middle class, the more free time and more education that will happen, and they will be part of the group. But here's the thing, Chaz, and this is and this is a response I would give to that if I were going to be arguing for atheism plus, which I guess is my role here tonight, is to say that. By aligning itself with the social progressive community and saying that those are issues that we care about, uh, we're going to fight to make those kinds of changes in our society, you make that possibility more available and, and, and as a byproduct, strengthen your own community. If they can do it, then I'm really happy, and I think that Atheism Plus be good. Honestly, I think that's way more important than the progressive – uh, political values. I, if they can grow diversity in atheism, then I'm happy. Especially in the gay culture. I feel like gay people. I don't understand why they go to the Christian church at all. What is happening? What is? Well, did you see? <laughs> did you see that the Ask an Atheist podcast had been blacklisted from uh, the donors list on a on a gay gay uh, group in Seattle? No. That that like that was that was an example of. They had raised a bunch of money for one of these pride organizations and had been – then weren't added to the donors list. Wow. And when somebody uh, – Free Thought Blogs, I think it was Martin Wagner over at, um, at the uh, – PXP. 
yeah, over at uh, Atheist Experience page, posted uh, on it, and within a few hours, their Facebook page had been so inundated that that Ask an Atheist had been they had changed they had changed it and added to Ask an Atheist to the donors list. They had changed their stance on that issue. So, you know, I bet it was inundated with people not acting like dicks. <laughs> well, I mean, if, if it worked. There, I don't know. I think there's a time and a place for pointing out when somebody's being completely hypocritical, and I think that would be an example of an of a of a group being completely hypocritical. But the, you can point it out without insulting them. Yeah, though, exactly. Yeah. Trying to say. yeah, that's exactly. You, you, well, just, you, you just explained and, it how you do it without being a dick. And Martin did say, like, once it had been changed, Martin added a, like an edit at the top of it said, "It's been fixed. Don't go back over there." <laughs> <That's> and <funny. laughs> so. Yeah, but I mean, I mean that's the kind of thing that like we should be participating in is is or is building ties with the gay rights groups and the communities, and then when they do shit on us, being like, hey, what the hell? It's relatively easy to build ties with the gay rights community because they have this event every year where everyone's welcome to fill out a form and come like table, and they already have a thing where they they expect faith groups to come and table at their event. Right. And so whenever we started tabling at Pride, they're just like, okay, well, we already have these Unitarians. You don't strike us as that weird. We're a pretty open-minded lot. And so we just got a table and we marched in the parade and it was, you know, it was no big deal. Yeah. One of the things that we we did as our group is we took it a step further and we helped actually pick up trash at the event. We didn't just show up and make our presence known for our own benefit. We actually helped the community. That was incredible. Yeah. So I mean, and that's that's the kind of thing that I think Atheism Plus should be applauding and and highlighting when those kinds of things occur. That when groups do that, they should get a you know get that should be made more publicly known. So yeah. anyway, um, I think that's enough for tonight, don't you, Chaz? I I do. I think we've gone uh, long enough. This is CJ. This is Chaz. And this is Damien on behalf of the Oklahoma Atheist Godcast, wishing you all a good night. The Oklahoma Atheist Godcast is produced by the Oklahoma Atheists. The mission of the Oklahoma Atheists is to develop a community of individuals and families who value and promote critical thinking, free thought, reason, and a scientific worldview, and who seek to have a positive effect on the community at large through fellowship, rational discussion, community service, and education. For more information, please visit our website at www.oklahomaatheist.com. The music for today's show is from the song God is Dead by Jaron Lake and is reproduced here under a Creative Commons license. Jared's music in the Oklahoma Atheist Godcast are hosted courtesy of the Internet Archives Community Audio Collection, available at www.archive.org. To join discussion about the ideas presented in today's show, please visit our blog at blog.oklahomaatheist.com.